Hey Sagittarius, it's Empress Rose here. Welcome to your reading. These are general readings. We're going to take what works, leave what doesn't, as with everything. If I don't catch your wavelength or storyline here, you can check your other major placements, see if we can't connect over there. All right, so we're starting with the Oracle Decks of Moonology and Work Your Light for an intuitive vibe of where we're going. And then we'll move on to the Muse deck for more traditional tarot spread. All right. Okay. Just have one. Maybe that's all we need, actually. All right. These flipped over. Two of those. All right. Here's the main one. A time for healing, balsamic moon. So, time for healing. Rest. Healing. Recovery from something. That recovery doesn't mean anything's over or doesn't mean we can't go on it just means we need to recover we need to heal we need to have some recovery days and heal and this is preparation for our future so that we can meet it whole and as whole as possible as healed as possible as healthy as possible so a time for healing heading towards healthiness heading towards um full full energy uh, but allowing this to to be a time for that. Allowing time for that healing. Uh, we have Council of Light, Divine Orchestration, Helpers in Subtler Realms. So they may be he bringing healing messages to you, healing vibes to you. They could also be, um, you know, this time out may be important. And they could also be making sure, um, you know, whatever Council of Light or Divine Orchestration this could be part of some sort of divine plan as a timeout for healing, uh, pacing yourself, um, not rushing forward, you know, half healed, half wounded, you know, blood spurting everywhere. I'm imagining some sort of um, over exuberant soldier or knight, you know, um, still pouring out. Uh, their life blood and uh, and thereby being even more vulnerable to attack um, and not being able to even be be very useful in the battle because the, their their wounds are depleting them so much. So there could also be a divine timing going on here as far as like take this time to heal and rest because another time is coming that you need to be ready for. And I don't mean this ominously. I guess that battle metaphor kind of put us right there, but I don't mean it ominously. It's just, you know, hey, there could be some really good things coming too and you want to be energized or you want to be healed. You don't want to bring your your broken self or or you know you want to be as much healed as you can before you begin another relationship before you begin something else so a time for healing and rest and it could have to do with divine timing and divine orchestration that this time is needed for you uh pleiades so we have two about connection here uh connection and conversation soul family call in your tribe you don't have to do it alone i like this you do have this council or a council of helpers but perhaps this is also about asking for help from actual people right this goes really spiritual divine orchestration helpers in the subtler realms but maybe there's some help available to you as you heal from something that you hadn't really considered um you know everybody loves being asked to help well not everybody but and not like i don't know i i mean i just appreciate it when someone's like hey i'm having this surgery would you be one of the people to bring me something, um, some food or something afterwards. And oh my gosh, yes, what a privilege that you would ask me to be part of your life in this way, to be part of your healing, right? So you don't have to do it alone. There are people that want to help or that that's, that's like a little bit of a thrill for them. They feel honored to help. So if you want to ask for help, do it. I mean, and this is again, uh, you don't have to do it alone. Help. So we have two cards here that there's help available. There's also help like, you know, a therapist, like they, those people, they, man, they go, they went to school for a long time or they should have, uh, I should double check that. And they, they, um, you know, they, uh, they go to continuing education classes every year. You know, they want to help. They're here to help. And some of them are more helpful than others. 
and it might take a minute to find someone that helps. So whatever you're dealing with, be sure to ask for help. Um, you could ask for even recommendations to find a therapist, something like that. So you've got, uh, you don't have to do it alone. Uh, there's a lot of people, it looks like there's almost this whole army here wanting to help you, wanting to assist in this healing time for you, wanting to be there for you and connect with you and either help you uh, physically or help you emotionally. Um, so calling in your tribe, you don't have to do it alone. This is just beautiful. Divine orchestration, helpers in the cellular realms, call in your tribe, you don't have to do it alone. Just really beautiful message there of all the help available to you, Sagittarius, um, and the desire to help and the de dedication to helping and, and being helpful and wanting to do that as you heal. Uh, and then we have Pleiades, double mission, channeling, and uplifting humanity. There's a conversation here that's going to be very uplifting. And maybe even uh, you need to seek out some inspiring uh, speakers or inspiring speeches, inspiring films or movies, something that, that's really uplifting as you go through this healing time. Um, and this can also be yeah, any kind of storytelling, these more uplifting stories. You know, I'm seeing something about don't like the 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 reverse side of all of these cards is like you wallowing in misery uh watching horrible not horrible movies there's some very very good movies but like you've got um you know Shawshank Redemption on repeat that's a heavy movie at least for me you know and you're not reaching out to anybody and you're kind of in a dark hole that's not the kind of healing that you're being encouraged towards you're being encouraged towards a time of healing where um, where people want to help you, you connect with other people and you connect with more uplifting stories where there's a time for, for uh, darker, you know, awareness stories and heavier stories. Uh, but this for you is not that time. If you're watching a movie, it needs to be a, a kind of uplifting movie. And that doesn't mean shallow at all, right? Life's, life can be pretty difficult and pretty heavy. So um, so distracting from that or engaging with something that can remind you that, that it's all not always heavy and not always hard uh, is important too. So uh, something uplifting, some sort of communication here that's uplifting and um, could be a conversation, could just could be some sort of media um, that's helpful for you. All right, Sagittarius, cut in the deck here on our Muse tarot deck. This is your past, your present, your inner landscape, what's at issue, your environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like where we're going. It's a little bit of a some, some interesting energies in, in between here and there. In your recent past, we have four of materials. So we have this... Um, clinging to something, obsession with something. It could also be, um, uh, sometimes I see a honeymoon period of just loving something, being in love with something, um, and spending that time, or like a laying in period for a new mother where we're just bonding with something and the rest of the world can just do its thing and, and move on. We're gonna, we're gonna sit here and bond with this, but this can also be, so there's, there's like moments where obsession is healthy and isolation from other other things is healthy, like a honeymoon where we're we're sort of um, building the a new dynamic in our relationship, and we're taking time away from regular time to do that, or we're building a we're creating a bond with our child, and we're building that bond. So we're taking a, some laying in time to um, to create that. So there 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 are these times where we take a time out and we kind of obsess about something, and it's important. It's important to establish a foundation. But there are other times when we're obsessing over something that. I mean, she's only got four coins here. Why are we clinging to four coins? Why are we so obsessed with these, this pittance, this tiny amount, this breadcrumbed amount? She's got four roses and she's super obsessed with it. Um, there's a lot more coming. There's a lot more to, to, there's a lot more abundance here. And so the four materials can also deal with sort of the more negative aspects of that as far as clinging to something that doesn't need to be clinged to or isn't all that. This is um, like, uh, you know, when you first have a first have like a, a first boyfriend or something and it's very exciting and then you're like, um, it was, what, why was I so into that? Why was I so into that? That wasn't much, you know, and there I was clinging to this person that wasn't giving me very much and wasn't 
um, really, um, really contributing much to my life and I was all over them and, and contributing to them. So there can be some negative aspects to this of just like, uh, you know, is that worth you clinging to it? A new baby, a, a new dynamic in the relationship? Yeah, that's, that's, that, those are times where it's worth taking some time out and having this mild obsessive energy. But then there's these other things that just don't make sense. So it's a four of materials at its base is, is to me a mildly obsessive energy um, and it might be for a purpose, a time, a reason, and it might also be um, absurd given what you're getting out of the situation. Not that much. So it's not that big a thing. So why do you cling in to it? Um, and then we have, you know, like a like a minimum wage job. Why are you clinging to this? It, it's replaceable. You don't need to be that worried about quitting or losing or losing it or whatever. They're not that worried about you. Why would you be more worried about them, you know, than they are about you? Uh, so then we have seven of materials here waiting. You put a lot of work and effort and maybe a little bit of obsessive time into something. And the seven of materials has you waiting for the fruits of those labors. Um, maybe you saw some first fruits. Maybe you saw some initial initial things and you were very excited about it and now you're waiting for the rest of it okay so where's the rest i've i've worked really hard here i've put in a lot of effort towards something i've you know not hung out with my friends so that i could do this job or i've not hung out with my friends so that i could make this work um this you know you've clung to something you've worked really hard towards it and you're waiting for the fruits of your labors. You know, you put a lot of effort into this relationship or this job or something, uh, quite a bit of effort and maybe even isolated yourself from other people or didn't hang out with your friends or didn't, didn't do other hobbies because you were so devoted to this situation. And now you're sort of waiting and maybe you're waiting to see if this was worth it. This, this sort of, um, you know, time period where you've been a little obsessed or a little bit or overworking uh, something, is it, did it pay off? Did it pay off? So Seven of Materials has you wondering if it paid off, still very focused on what you're doing, but really, um, does this, does this train go anywhere? Does this, um, you know, does this track go anywhere? Is it, is this a bridge to nowhere or does this bridge go someplace I want to go? So you may be asking some questions there as the, as you wait for the fruits of these labors that you've put in, uh, your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape, and basically it's the inner landscape card, the moon card, dealing with what can be known, what can't be known, subconscious issues coming up for examination. You may be worried about some subconscious issues coming up for examination, but this is about what can be tamed, what can't be tamed, what can be understood, what cannot be understood, what can be seen, what must remain hidden, what can't be seen, just simply can't given given what our eyes, the capabilities and incapabilities that our eyes just naturally have. What can't, there are things that we can't see because it just doesn't show up on our spectrum, our, you know, of, of the wavelengths we're capable of absorbing with our eyeballs. So, um, so there could be things and most likely are things that we can't see because they're outside of that range that this particular equipment is is able to observe so what can't be observed so that's that's well to, um that's that can also be a metaphor of just like what those things that you are able to see and things that you're just not able to see simply because you're a human being in and and as such you must have limits um you may have come from a limitless uh, divine, but in these bodies we have limits um, and uh, things that things that they can do and things that they can't do. So you're dealing with limitations possibly with um, and with with psychological issues, subconscious issues. Um, that's all in your in your um, that's what's going on here in your hopes, your fears, your inner landscape. Uh, what's at issue here is the Knight of Materials. So something is at either a full stop and not moving at all. This is a Knight. This could be someone who's extremely stubborn and is refusing to budge. This could be a person that's very, very stubborn and refusing to budge. Could be a person who's also a little bit sloppy, can't see the overall picture, uh, moves without thinking, um, isn't isn't trying to get anywhere or trying to accomplish anything. The Knight of Materials in the upright, if everything's moving well and isn't an issue, the Knight of Materials in the upright is about um, 
is about planning, seeing the overall vision and moving very carefully step by step, but seeing how things can unfold and understanding sort of the ramifications in the real world. So this would be, this could be a person or a vibe. So the, this person could be, you know, either completely stopped and not even moving slowly. They're just not moving at all. Just totally stubborn, ignorant and stubborn. Like they don't even want to know. They don't want to see. They don't want, and maybe they're incapable. Maybe they, they just don't have the ability to see that something can, how something's going to unfold or, or how something works or, and they could be, this could also be someone who moves incautiously or doesn't move at all. Just a uh, very incautious, thought, thoughtless mo mo movement and communication. The nights can be about communication and movement. So it could be someone who's, who's um, not communicating at all. That's a full stop, not just a slow movement. And they may not understand the ramifications of that. They may not understand the effects that that has on other people or how that creates a pattern and an issue. They may not just be capable at all of seeing that, right? Because we're dealing with the moon card, what we're, what's capable of being seen and understood and what's not capable of being seen and understood. And this knight of materials could be someone who's not capable of seeing the ramifications of their actions. So they're maybe very thoughtlessly, um, they may either, either speak thoughtlessly or not speak at all and not really have an understanding of the effect that that's having on other people. So in your environment, you have the death card. So this could be a major transformation going on around you. Um, you could also already be, I wouldn't, this, the tarot isn't meant to predict death, but there could have been a death in your, um, in your past or, or that is, has been experienced in your life. Um, this would be already not a prediction. You would know that, right? You would know someone had passed on. Hence this need for healing here too. Um, and a need for, for kind of making sure you're, you're staying uplifted and you're staying, you're not, um, doing a deep dive into negativity. So, but death is about something, but overall in tarot in general, we're talking about a big change, a really big change going on in your life and something, um, something ending, something big ending. And this sort of a threshold moment. Death either talks about the moment before this threshold moment where you know, things are starting to change, things are shifting. This wouldn't be a surprise to you here. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You're either moving or you're going through a, a major event in your life where something's changing. There's a big change. Well, of course, it's on the one, scale of one to 10 always, but there's a big change here uh, and you're, it's, a, it's an ending, uh, an ending, and then we're going to be experiencing the new beginning, but the death card usually talks about the ending and something, you know, sort of a fall time, a fall period, autumn of a situation, the autumn of a situation here. Maybe some sort of sense of, of preserving it a little bit. Uh, the silence after something ends or that. I see some silence here. Well, and with this night of materials and the time for healing, I see a lot of silence and quietness as this, this change goes on. So in your environment, you're dealing with a pretty big change. Its purpose is, is part of life and part of and and it will be eventually in service of a rebirth but for now we're dealing with sort of a threshold moment of uh, moving from one space in your life is ending uh another space will be gearing up um and we want to be healthy and moving into that space uh so we're allowing for some silence and some rest in this ending um and your to-do list uh your greatest growth um, and your what you're looking for an opportunity to engage with is three of emotions, friendships. So I love this because this was already what we were getting here. It's just friendships, friendships, relationships, mutually supportive relationships where we're sharing um, our hopes, our fears, um, our joys and triumphs and our, our um, 
and our fails, right? So reaching out to friendships. You have three cards here, actually, which is amazing given, you know, the few number of cards I have here, but three cards here about friendship, about reaching out for, to friends, connecting with them, allowing them to help you. And this doesn't mean it has to be all about you, but allowing some deep emotional sharing with your tribe, with your friends, with your soul family, right? So that is a very clear to-do list here. <laughs> um, repeated, reaching out to friends, reaching, and it can be hard, especially after this pandemic, to reach out to friends um, because uh, some of them may, you may have forgotten that you have them. You may have forgotten how many people, you know, in, in quarantine and isolation, you may have forgotten that you do have friends and that you do have people that care for you and want to be there for you. So reaching out to friends. Um, and then where you're headed, emotional satisfaction, nine of emotions, some sort of um, balance. And it's almost, there's a, there's a witness this thing here as, as allowing yourself to be seen, allowing this um, happiness. And there's some sort of, ha it's earned happiness. You worked for this happiness. This happiness doesn't plop in your lap because circumstances are absolutely perfect. This happiness is something that you created, that you earned, and your trophy for the work that you do now is going to be happiness and a more unshakable happiness, right? If we're waiting for our circumstances in our lives to perfectly line up exactly the way we want them, one, there's always a risk that once it does line up exactly the way we want them, we won't be happy after all. That's not, you know, it won't, it won't bring us the happiness we thought having this perfect circumstance, um, would bring us. Um, but the other thing is you're going to be waiting a long time and you're probably not going to live most of your life um, in happiness if everything has to be lined up and perfect, perfect for you to experience happiness. So, so there's a lot of inner work that has to go into um, being happy or being content or being at ease and, and at peace in your life. So there's a sense of, of other people seeing that, but there's more a sense of accomplishment, right? This meditation, you know, we practice and practice and practice meditation. Um, oftentimes it's disrupted by a lot of thoughts and it's very difficult, but at some point we can, you know, achieve some sort of, uh, not consistent, but some sort of moments of having achieved a meditative state or having gotten to um, a higher plane of sort of satisfaction and, um, and peace with our lives. So this night of emotions, I'm not going to call it happiness. I'm going to call it being at peace, having achieved through your own work and your own inner labors, especially coming under the moon card, dealing with subconscious issues, right? An inner peace and an inner acceptance and an inner, inner joy that Camus quote, one of my favorites by Albert Camus about, um, in the middle, in the midst of, of winter, I discovered within myself, I'm butchering it, by the way, but in the midst of winter, I discovered within myself an invincible summer. So this is about that journey of, of, of um, that invincible summer within yourself. But there's something very key about reaching out to others um, and getting help and reaching out to friends and connecting with other people, even though the happiness is going to be all internal and it's going to be something you accomplish and and work towards there's no reason why and in fact you're being clearly stated that some of that growth is going to come from other people and come from um from your soul full soul tribe and soul family here so um all right so sagittarius i hope that that was helpful for you thank you for your likes subscribes and comments and i'll see you guys in a couple weeks